Thanks for listening. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Dr. Lodi, please visit drsudliff.com. I am an American board certified OBGYN, a mom, a Muslim, and I'm talking about sex. This is the Muslim Sex Podcast. Welcome to the Muslim Sex Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sada Flody, and in this episode, we will be talking about everything you need to know about abnormal uterine bleeding, bleeding in between periods, heavy bleeding, and all of that good gynecology stuff. But before we get into it, I want to make one thing clear is that I am not giving any type of medical advice, nor am I giving any type of religious advice. So if you're having any medical concerns, please speak with your friendly neighborhood healthcare provider. And if you're having any religious concerns, please speak with your friendly neighborhood religious leader. And this is the Muslim Sex Podcast because I just happen to be a Muslim woman that talks about sex. If you are listening to this podcast and like it, please leave us a review. And I would love to see those five stars. Also remember to share it with your friends that would like to listen and maybe experiencing any of the things that I talk about on my podcast, please feel free to share it. And remember, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, Remember that I help women with sexual confidence so that they can find more pleasure in their relationships. So feel free to look me up on my website at drsadaf.com. And now we get into the podcast episode. So today I am so happy to have on with me Dr. Edward Wing. And Dr. Wing, welcome to the podcast. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Of course. And so if you could just tell the listeners and the viewers a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Uh, sure. I'm an OBGYN physician and I practice in uh, a part of Virginia called Suffolk. Um, I, I own a private practice here and uh, a private practice has been around for 10 years now and I've been practicing for almost 30 years. Um, wow. And All right. um, uh, my practice is um, both obstetrics and gynecology, so I deliver babies and take care of women during their pregnancy as well as um, during during their non-pregnant life as well. All right, that's awesome. So I know that, uh, so you said that you are an OBGYN just like I am. So tell me a little bit about um, this abnormal uterine bleeding. What exactly is it for those of our listeners and viewers that may not know what this is. So um, when we talk about abnormal uterine bleeding, it refers to uh, bleeding that uh, occurs, the menstrual cycle that occurs uh, in either a prolonged fashion or in a heavy volume uh, fashion, or the amount of it is very heavy. And so um, the a normal period uh, lasts usually less than seven seven days, and um, in terms of the amount, um, it it is less than eighty cc's over the course of the the period. Now that's kind of hard to tell, you know, in terms of measurements because no one yeah we're not measuring. <laughs> yeah, that's but for sure. you know that that if if you're using you know more than one tampon an hour that that's a good idea that it's heavy okay yeah so you know you mentioned that a normal period can be is you know maybe less than seven days but you know i just want the viewers also to know that sometimes it can be a little bit longer and um just to kind of watch it over the next few months and then if it persists definitely you know speak with your provider but so you talk a little bit about you know, bleeding that can be sustained for a longer period of time, like greater than seven days. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what happens when you have bleeding in between your periods and, you know, uh, what that may look like? So, you know, the, the abnormalities of the menstrual cycle are, in, you know, there's many different, different configurations of it, I'll say. You know, some some people have regular cycles that, are, that occur every every month. They can be predictable. You know what day it's going to start, but it's just prolonged or or heavy. 
Um, there are some women that have periods that are unpredictable, that they can't tell when their next period is going to occur. Sometimes the periods occur multiple times in a month. Sometimes the, the volume of bleeding is different in each one of those uh, times that they have a period. Um, so, you know, there are different reasons why that happens. Um, but, you know, the, the, the normal period is a, a monthly period, um, usually um, between 24 and 28 um, days um, per, uh, in between the periods. And, um, and when it gets to be different than that, then that's something your, your provider can evaluate you for. Sure, sure. So I, I know that you mentioned 24 to 28 days, and, and some books even state that it can be anywhere from 21 to 35 days, right? So it can that cycle can vary a little bit, uh, but definitely it's important that if it persists or you're having heavy periods, um, that you go and speak with your provider. So I know that there's tons of reasons why that can happen. Maybe you can talk a little bit about all, maybe not all of them, but a few of the reasons why it's, you know, so somebody can experience like abnormal uterine bleeding. Sure. Um, you know, so the, the way that uh, the periods occur um, is due to the interaction of several hormones that the body produces. Um, those hormones come from uh, the brain, they come from the pituitary gland, uh, and they come from the ovaries. And there's a, a entire mechanism that the woman's body has um, to ultimately um, produce an egg or release an egg from the ovaries. Um, and that egg will um, either meet with sperm and a baby um, be formed or um, will will not do that and eventually the hormones will decrease in amount and then result in a period. So um, problems with any of those hormones along those pathways can cause um, heavy bleeding. Um, probably the most common uh, cause of heavy bleeding is what we call anovulation and that's where an egg doesn't get released from the ovary. And that just sets off a cascade of, of abnormal hormone production, which um, results in a lot of different uh, results. It can result in not having a period at all. It can result in having a period that lasts for a very long time. It can la uh, result in a heavy period. And, um, and so the hormones are definitely a, a cause of it. And then you have um, problems with the uh, uterus itself. Um, and uh, those kind of come in two, two different ways. One is there is the problems with the, um, the muscle of the uterus. Um, there are tumors that can form there that are called um, fibroids. And right. fibroids... And those, we just want to clarify that those tumors can uh, are usually benign, right? So I know yeah. that a lot of times when people hear the word tumor, they may get triggered and may think it's cancerous. But when we're talking about tumors in this respect, we're talking about fibroids, which are benign tumors. So yes. sorry to interrupt, but yeah. No problem. So they're benign tumors um, of the uterus and they um, can cause the, the uterus to become enlarged. And um, because of that enlargement, also because of the, the location of the fibroids, it can cause heavy bleeding. Um, there's a condition that's called adenomyosis, um, which is a a abnormality where the, the cells of the lining of the uterus um, become implanted in the muscle of the uterus where it doesn't belong. And that causes the uterus also to be enlarged and to behave abnormally, um, resulting in pain and bleeding. Um, also sometimes results in um, painful sexual activity. And, and then the other part of the uterus that uh, can be affected is also the lining of the uterus. Can have an overgrowth um, called hyperplasia, which can result in heavy bleeding. And there can also be cancer of the lining of the uterus, um, which can cause the, the bleeding. There are also several medications that uh, can cause abnormal bleeding. Um, the uh, medications used to treat uh, blood clots in the body um, deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism um, 
blood thinners, as they're, they're commonly referred to, um, can, can cause heavy bleeding. And there are other medications, um, such as some medications used to, used to treat psychiatric conditions, can, can affect the, um, the production of certain hormones in the body, which can affect the periods as well. Um, and I think that, that's the pretty, most of the common ones, common causes of heavy bleeding. Yeah, I know you mentioned fibroids and of course there's polyps as well that can cause abnormal uterine bleeding. Um, and, you know, and ovulation, like Dr. Wing said, and, and fibroids. And, um, you know, I'm thinking of that mnemonic, right? That we learned that palm Cohen, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. it comes up with all of those, um, theologies, those reasons that you can have the abnormal uterine bleeding. So, you know, as you know, this is called the Muslim sex podcast. So I know that you and I had spoken a little bit about, you know, what, um, abnormal uterine bleeding can do to intimacy and a relationship. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. I, I think in, in leading, uh, to talking about that, we can just talk about, um, the effects of this bleeding on the quality of life. Um, so what, what happens is that, um, you know, this, this bleeding becomes a dominant control in many women's lives, um, especially the ones that cannot predict when it's going to happen. And, you know, they start adjusting their life according to, um, the, the bleeding. They, they don't go out anymore. You know, when they go out, they have to take all of these precautions to, to keep from having a, an accident out in public, you know, accident being, you know, bleeding through the clothes or yeah. having blood go on to the, the floor or other surfaces. And, um, you know, work many times can be affected and um, where the bleeding is so heavy that women have to leave you know, the workplace, or they can't go to work at, at all, if, uh, especially if it's associated with, with pain. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, and when that happens chronically, um, many women just get affected in terms of just how they, how they feel. It yeah. becomes very frustrating. Um, it becomes something that produces anxiety. You know, you can imagine, you know, work being having to go someplace and, and, and worrying all the time that that you're going to have an accident and you may not be able to prevent it. You know, that yeah. can just evoke a lot of anxiety. In women. Absolutely. I mean, like I um, I don't even have to imagine it. I know it. I've lived it. It's uh, it's awful, actually, when you have that heavy uh, menstrual bleeding and you know if it if you've ever had it where it's actually soaked through your clothes i mean that's an awful awful experience and yeah a lot of women undergo that i just ha recently had a friend as well who had the same thing happen so it, it happens way more often than we think about and that we know so you're absolutely right in terms of how it affects uh, quality of life, right? And especially if that's on, you know, the top of your mind every day and you're worried, um, you know, what's gonna happen and, you know, it's it's very limiting and you're not able to leave the house or, and or if you do, you're always worried and you, like you said, you know, you may need to keep additional clothes or whatever with you so that in case you have an accident, um, you know, where you're bleeding through your clothes, I mean, that's, that's really embarrassing and uh, and debilitating for some women. So um, maybe you can talk about what happens after, you know, when women have this heavy bleeding. I mean, I know that sometimes women can become anemic, right? Mm -hmm. And they need a blood transfusion and or they may need to be hospitalized depending on how low that blood count is. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, I, I think w one of the things that makes this um, condition just, you know, so devastating is that um, the, the woman can, can believe that this is normal. Yeah. That this is the way she is. Or, right. you know, I, I even had a patient recently whose primary care doctor told her that her heavy bleeding was 
was a normal thing and she shouldn't worry about it. Wow. And I wow. met her for the first time and I said, no, it's not normal. That's, right. that's not normal. Right. And, um, and so, you know, the, the anemia, the low blood count that occurs in the body because, you know, so much blood is lost, that has an effect on everything. That makes you tired. Yeah. Um, that makes you irritable, mm -hmm. you know, and then that has a effect mm -hmm. on, you know, your relationships that you have. It can have an effect on your, your, your job and your workplace. Um, and um, it, it can have an effect with your, your spouse. Absolutely. You know, where, Absolutely. and, and those, those are just the, the emotions, but long term you know i mentioned anxiety but depression is also something that that can occur where you know there's this constant you know hope hopelessness that the woman is either told that it's normal or you know believes that it's it's normal but and sees no no way out and over time that that just can cause depression and that has just far-reaching um, you know, consequences. You know, I think something that you mentioned, which um, I think should actually should be restated. Absolutely. Just like, I mean, in the sense that it should be emphasized is that women tend to believe that they're meant to suffer, right? <laughs> in so many aspects of their life, like whether it's with bleeding, with heavy bleeding, with cramps, with pain, um, with intercourse, with menopause, with puberty, with in every aspect of our lives, it's almost been normalized that women should, you know, suffer when it comes to these type of gynecologic issues. And I think what you bring up, which is a really good point, is that, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to accept the fact that you're going to, you know, that you may be bleeding heavy and that it's impacting all parts of your life. You don't have to accept that as normal, you know, but instead go and see a physician who understands you, who, uh, who can empathize with your problems and then offer you a solution that is, you know, applicable to your life so that you can go on and do the things that you need to do in your daily life. Like, you know, take care of your kids, go to your job, go see family, whatever, be with your friends. Um, but that just to make sure that it, it, it is, you know, known that women don't need to suffer. We shouldn't have to deal with heavy bleeding, that there are solutions. So, you know, I'd love to hear from you in terms of what are the different solutions that women can have for this heavy bleeding? Yeah, I, I, I think the patients that I see, I, I, I always ask them, you know, one, two questions. Yeah. Um, you know, one question is, if I had a magic wand and I could wave it over your head, and and grant you the period of your dreams, the period that you want to have. Yeah. What uh -huh. what would that be? And the reason I ask that question is because I I have patients who see the period in such a way that they would not feel natural if they didn't have a period. Sure. And um, and so you know the approach to that patient is going to be different than the patient who tells me if I had my way, I'd never have another period again in my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, so that's, it's, it's very important to understand the, the, the woman's ideas about periods and, and what, what it means to her in her life. Um, because, you know, it's, it's an important thing, you know, it's, it's interesting. I went to, um, Arizona once, and um, there, I went to a museum that spoke of um, the indigenous people um, from the United States, and um, they have just this huge ceremony that happens when when a young woman has her first period, mm. and it's involving clothing and dance and and all these these things, and so That's you awesome. know that that person would have a very different view of their periods than, you know, maybe someone in, in a different culture that, you know, doesn't have the same thing. Absolutely. You know, I agree with you. I think that there is a lot of shame in, you know, perhaps in certain cultures, perhaps it's taboo, you don't talk about it, you know, it's embarrassing and all of those things. And 
I think that just as you're stating, right, it's a beautiful thing and it's something that should be celebrated. And I think for women that, you know, have periods, um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I, actually, it's something that tells us that our body's actually working the way it's supposed to be working, right? That's the way, yeah. um, you know, the brain and the ovaries and the hormones, that's all how they interact. And that's the way, you know, and it results in a period. And like you said, you know, knowing what the goals of the patient are, right? Like some patients don't ever want to have a period. And so they decide to take birth control continuously and don't want a period. There are other people that having a period is super important to them. And like you said, you know, I have women that uh, maybe on Depo-Provera or on, you know, the Mirena IUD or a, a progesterone containing IUD that they don't get a, their bleeds. And then they're very worried because they want to see that bleed. They want to make sure they're not pregnant, right? So what are some solutions that you offer your pa patients? So I, I think the solutions come, you know, in three three categories. There's the conservative um, methods, and and that's for women who who maybe don't have you know tremendous um, disruption due to the periods, um, where we can get just, just kind of watch, um, you know, the periods over over time. Um, you know, those patients, I get them to uh, use one of the the many menstrual apps that exists mm. for, yeah. for cell phones and get them to, to have some education about their period and to be able to see, you know, how many days is it between the periods? You know, you really can predict it, you know, doing things that, um, you know, might, might help that in terms of lifestyle um, changes. So um, the woman's weight um, has an effect on, on the periods. Um, sometimes by losing weight, the periods um, improve. Um, mm -hmm. So that might be a conservative method of, of doing it. Then there are the medical methods, and it really depends on um, what the woman wants to see. Um, if she wants to see um, regular periods, we have different medications that we can use. They're, they're hormonal medicines in the, in the, for the most part that um, can give a monthly period or a period every um, two months or three months. There's different different ways that we can give the medication to achieve that. There are also some um, non-hormonal uh, um, uh, medications that can be used, and um, and so for the patient who doesn't want to use um, a birth control method, you know, we have those those methods, and then there are the um, they're they're considered medical. Um, the, the IUDs, um, you mentioned the progesterone containing IUDs. And we know them most of the time used uh, and they're used for contraception, but they can also be used to control periods. And then finally, the last category of treatments are the surgical treatments. And that can uh, be, um, you know, taking care of the, the particular problems in, in especially fibroids, sometimes removing the fibroids themselves um, can improve the, the periods. Um, there is a um, procedure that's called endometrial ablation, um, where the lining of the uterus is, de is destroyed and the lining is the thing that bleeds every month. And so um, it's, it's not guaranteed to make the periods go away, but in the great majority of cases, it makes the periods better. And in, in, in some patients, it does make it go away. And then finally, um, there's hysterectomy. And hysterectomy is, is a, a surgery that um, I have some patients who walk through the door and the first thing they tell me is, I want a hysterectomy. Like before yeah. we even talk about what the problem yeah. is, like that's, that's it. what they want. And I have other patients who are like, well, you can do anything you want to me, but I don't want a hysterectomy. Sure. And so, you know, that that is a procedure that has a lot of um, baggage with it, I'll say. And um, and so it's it's really important for, you know, the physician and the patient to have really meaningful talks about, you know, their feelings about, um, you know, that procedure and, um, you know, come to a conclusion that that she can be comfortable with whatever whatever it is. 
Right, right. And just, you know, just to emphasize again, what you were stating about what are the patient's goals, right? What is it that she wants? And how does she want to, whether, you know, maintain her fertility, whether or not she wants to, whether or not she wants to keep that uterus, is she done? What's her age, you know, and how bad is the bleeding impacting her life? So absolutely what you're saying in terms of, you know, affirming the patient's goals. Now, you know, I know that for a lot of patients that come in and that may have abnormal uterine bleeding, you know, their intimacy is definitely affected, right? So, you know, they're not able to have that physical intimacy with their partner because they're always bleeding and they're bleeding very heavy. And of course, like you said, you know, there's lots of other emotions associated with it. They may have some anxiety with it. They may have depression. They may have low self-image. Um, you know, low body image, all of those things. They may think they're broken because they're bleeding all the time and they just don't understand and they can't get a handle on it. So I think that definitely with all that bleeding, it absolutely affects the intimacy. But I think what's also important is that, you know, there's different ways for patients to achieve intimacy. For example, there can be some emotional, intellectual, you know, experiential uh, types of intimacy that the patients can have, even if they're going through this. But what do you see in your practice? Um, I, I definitely see all, all of those things. And I'll, I'll just even add a, another one. Um, you know, when they um, speak about the number one cause of divorce in this country, it's financial disagreement. And, um, and one of the things that is not you know, taken into account a lot of times is the financial strain that this condition puts on the woman and her family. Sure. Um, because, you know, she she has many times trouble at her at her workplace if she's working. Sure. Um, because of having to take time off, sometimes Absolutely. you know, not being productive at work on, on times when she's having her cycle, you know. Sure. Sure. Not having empathetic coworkers or or a boss that's, right. that's empathetic to the condition, and you know, some sometimes women have to quit and leave their their job. Sometimes they get fired from their jobs because of absenteeism. So that's that's definitely one one part of it. And then the other thing is that it is amazing to me the amount of money that is spent in. Uh, feminine products to mm. prevent uh, accidents. Yeah, absolutely. Tampons, pads, diapers. Yeah. And, um, you know, I I once had a patient who, you know, who asked me if she could donate um, some feminine products to some charity that I know, knew of. Once she got treated for, you know, um, the condition, she realized that she had, you know, feminine products in every nook and cranny of her life, at work, in the car, in her pocketbook, you know, in the drawers, in the bathroom, in uh, her, you know, uh, every, everywhere that she spent time, she had, you know, some type of product. And and those things are really expensive. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you yeah. know, you can imagine, you know, part of your budget, you know, has to go towards these products. Yeah, definitely. You know, there is uh, this whole um, movement now against period poverty, right? And the fact that it can be very uh, disabling to patients, especially when they have heavy periods and they're not able to get to work. But also the fact that, um, you know, those feminine hygiene products are so expensive and that not everyone has access to them. In fact, um, I believe it was the, uh, the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan, was the first city in the U.S. to provide free feminine care products in all of their public bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And that was huge that great thing. because, you know, like we were just talking about, those products can be very expensive. And for somebody that is living, you know, with a very limited income, it's difficult to be able to buy those products and to have them on hand. And especially when you have this abnormal uterine bleeding where you are going through those product, products so quickly. So, you know, absolutely. There's definitely a need for more advocacy around 
uh, period poverty. So absolutely. So I'm, I'm really impressed that your patient, you know, donated their feminine products. And I think that that is maybe something that, you know, we should encourage more people to do once they've, you know, been able to get a handle on their periods, or perhaps they decide to eventually have a hysterectomy or something like that, that that would be a great initiative to do is to donate feminine hygiene products um, and kind of paying it forward so that others uh, can be, you know, helped when they have this heavy uterine bleeding. Yeah. 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 So, well, any parting thoughts on this abnormal uterine bleeding before we go? I, I definitely, you know, believe that effective treatment for heavy bleeding is life changing. Yeah. And I, I just see it over and over and over again. You know, uh, I, I always describe this this one patient that I had because it, it just meant so much to me. She she wound up having a hysterectomy and she came back to see me a couple of uh, weeks after the hysterectomy. And and it's a very common thing that I see, you know, while while we're going through the the, the workup to understand what's going on and the diagnostic tests. You know, the the woman comes into my office and she's neatly dressed and 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 everything, but then they get the treatment and they they come back after a couple of weeks, and they're wearing beautiful makeup and their <laughs> hair is done yeah, and they have yeah. beautiful nails and they're wearing wonderful clothing, and I remember this one particular lady came in like that and. I said, whoa, look at you, don't we look nice today? And she said, yes, you know, thank you very much. And we went about, you know, our discussion and the evaluation and, and about halfway through, I kind of, you know, went like this. <gasps> and she's like, what is it, Dr. Wing? What is it, Dr. Wing? I, I said, I see what you've done today. And she's like, what? I said, you came to my office wearing a white, pantsuit and the patient just busted into tears i mean just yeah. sobbing tears and I, I said what are you what are you feeling and she said i have never been able to wear these types of clothes before right and now i feel you know that confident beautiful. that i can i can go ah. out and, and wear what i want to wear that's and, right you know i i felt you know, there, there is, there are many things that that make doctors happy, but there, there's nothing better than when you you do something for a patient and help them with their medical problems so much that it it, it literally changes their life. And yeah, life altering. Just, That's amazing. I'm so thankful that I get the opportunity to do that. That's a great story. I love it. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, it just her whole world changed for her. And that's amazing to have such an impact on a patient and to know how much it impacted her life that she couldn't wear a certain clothes, right? And so now that you were able to take care of that problem for her, now she can live and dress and do what she wants. And, you know, that makes all the difference for her. And the, just the self-confidence, right? That she must have walked into that yeah. room with because she was able to wear that white pantsuit that she was never able to do before. So that's a great story. I love it. And just, you know, since we were talking about, you know, intimacy, you know, that spills over into that area because as a yeah. woman feels better and as she feels better about herself and she starts wearing, you know, the clothes that she wants to wear and the, the makeup that she wants to wear, you know, the husband notices that. Yeah. And, you know, the, the woman might be more, you know, uh, how can I put it, have a, have a greater, you know, desire to have that intimacy, the, the, both the physical intimacy, but, but other types of intimacy that Absolutely. she might not have had before. And Absolutely. Uh, it, just, Absolutely. it just opens that whole realm yeah. you know, up to those patients again. Definitely, definitely. So for all of the viewers and the listeners out there that are wondering how in the world can we get an appointment with Dr. Edward Wink, who is changing lives and with all these great stories, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find you? Where they, how can they schedule an appointment with you? So the best place to, uh, to 
find me in that that sense is on our website, which is uh, Lifetime Women's with an E Women's Health dot net. Okay. And um, we also have a Facebook page that's um, the same name, Lifetime Women's Health. And um, we're located in Suffolk, Virginia, which is in the southeastern part of Virginia. Most most people know Virginia Beach. And so we're a couple of cities over from Virginia Beach. All right. Excellent. Well, that was phenomenal. Thank you so much, Dr. Wing. I really appreciate oh, you coming on to um, my podcast. So, well, I am done here and it's been real and really intimate and remember this is not meant to be any type of medical advice so if you are seeking a healthcare provider and live in the virginia area please seek out dr wing otherwise please go speak with your own gynecologist regarding any type of abnormal bleeding you may be experiencing and until next time this is the muslim sex podcast Please be so kind to leave a review for the Muslim Sex Podcast. Five stars are always welcome and I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, this is the Muslim Sex Podcast. Mm-hmm.